Come on. Do your thing, Big Daddy. Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. <laughs> One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, God is in the blessing business. I'm in the receiving line. Man, that's a good feeling. I thank God for waking me up in the mornings. I really, really do. I thank God for the spirit that he wakes me up with because I finally, but I finally figured it out. Such a blessing that shouldn't be taken for granted. The fact that you are up today. The fact that you just got off work and you driving home. The fact that you got a job to come home from. The fact that you got a job to wake up to. Whatever it is, the fact that you can see, think, hear, smell, walk, talk, rhyme, reason. Whatever it is, it's a blessing, man. I was talking to a partner of mine last night. And an analogy came to me last night of what my life has been like. Just going over my story with a friend of mine of all the, some of the things I had gone through and he never knew it. Cause he said, man, you never told me that. We were just talking. One of the things I remember and it's kind of equated to my life was when I was a little boy, I should go to the store with my mom and, uh, she would let me buy a jigsaw puzzle. Now, for those of you, a jigsaw puzzle comes in a box. There are no instructions. It just comes in a box. And it's simple. You're going to dump the pieces out in a pile. And you're going to try to put the pieces together until it looks like the picture that's on the cover of the box. That's as simple as it is. Here is the deal. I would select a jigsaw puzzle based on the picture that I liked and if I thought I could do it. Now, if the picture looked too crazy, if it looked too intricate, I didn't want that puzzle. You know, and the thing was, back in the day, you got a jigsaw puzzle. You had 100-piece puzzles, 400-piece puzzles. Man, then they say a thousand piece puzzle. You go, whew, ooh. So those were a little difficult for me when I was a little boy. So I didn't want that. As I got a little bit older, I had more challenging puzzles, you know, 450, 500 piece puzzles. But I always picked a picture of something I liked. So it's very simple. You get the jigsaw puzzle, you get it home, you open it up, you dump it out on the table. You flip all the pieces over so you can see them. And then I would try to sort them based on the colors on the box. If it was like a a black section, I'd take all the black pieces and slide them over there. If it was some flowers, I'd try to find all the pictures with little jigsaw pieces with the little floor, and I'd separate them. And then I'd start putting it together. And the way I started was I'd try to build the border first because I knew all the straight edges had to be side by side at one point. And it was funny, man, because it's related to my life. I would start putting the pieces together of the picture I saw that I liked. And that would be my picture. A lot of people didn't like jigsaw puzzles. As a matter of fact, None of the boys on the street like jigsaw puzzles but me because they just didn't want to go through the intricate details of figuring that out, really go outside and run or something like that. And so what happened was, as I got older, I wanted more difficult and challenging puzzles, but I wouldn't go too far. I wanted some nice stuff to happen. I had a picture of what I wanted for my life, but I didn't want to go too far because it was so challenging and difficult, I, I I couldn't see myself with all of that. And I didn't have the time, the knowledge, the expertise, the figuring all the intricate detail. And I discovered something when I was talking last night. Of that's what happens in life to a lot of people. You get bogged down with the details of coming up and trying to create the picture that you want for yourself. You put it to the side. You say, oh, that puzzle crazy. Next thing you know, you crumble it up and put it back in the box. Or you go halfway and you get stuck. 
and you get to the part where it ain't a lot of different colors, it's all the same, and that's a little bit more challenging, so that may stop you. But it's somewhere in the jigsaw puzzle that it gets very difficult and challenging the bigger the picture you want. But then what will happen in your life is just like what will happen in a jigsaw. Once you get comfortable and you don't mind the challenge, you could get a bigger picture. But here's the key to it, though. If you put God in your mix, see, the picture that I saw for myself as a boy is not the picture that has happened to me as a man. Because along the way from boyhood to manhood, from the time I was 10, you understand, what happened along the ride in there was I started putting God in the mix. And so now the picture that I have now is not the picture I saw. It's the picture that God saw. So what I'm saying, this analogy is, the picture you have may be difficult to complete, but if you were to include God in your life, put God in your jigsaw puzzle, God will not only help you complete the puzzle, and he going to add some pieces, he going to do some favors, he going to show some mercy, and you going to look up, and the picture that you're able to end up with will be totally different and much more complete, much more beautiful, a bigger picture than the one you had, because there's no way that I could have saw the life that I have today back when I was a boy. And it amazes me when I hear people say, I always saw this for myself. Uh, I didn't do that. I didn't quite see this for myself. I don't know how you can have the ability to see what God really has for you. But man, he's a masterful jigsaw man. He's an incredible puzzle completer. So if you got a puzzle that's challenging to you, maybe you need to see what's the picture that God has for your life. If God were in your life, if you completed the puzzle, what would it look like? It'll be a far more extensive puzzle, and it will be a far more beautiful piece of scenery than you could have ever imagined. Tears come in my eyes because I can't believe God brought me this far. I can't believe that when I opened up and accepted him and started talking to him, that he would add all these pieces to my jigsaw puzzle, and my jigsaw puzzle would look like this. And I can tell you, I ain't got a whole lot to do with, with, with what I done turned into. It's mostly favor and blessings and grace and mercy of God. And I looked up and I just got a much bigger jigsaw puzzle completed. And guess what? He ain't through with me yet. That's what's amazing and exciting about a relationship with God. God can take your jigsaw puzzle and fix it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Why is La Isla Bonita one of her most famous songs? So when you're wrong, are you often long words like this? Because you should really like slow it yes. down, listen, okay. and get to the right yes, Okay, is. That's okay. what this whole okay, podcast I'm, okay. is. It's just Fran being wrong at length. Rose. Fran, how did we make it to the second season of our podcast and we still have all these opinions? Uh, pardon my non-binary vibes, but I'm just like, <laughs> does it all need to be explained? Pat took the glasses off her face, put them on America, <gasps> and those are Betty's glasses. That's so shit. Yes! <laughs> a forgotten Madonna album. Forgotten by the world, maybe, but not by and me. Not, and not by me. Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. But I have it. <laughs> but I have it. Have it. Period. <laughs> Father, son, house of Gucci. Like a Virgin is proud to be a part of the Outspoken Network from iHeart Podcasts. Listen on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, your undivided attention is required right now. It is time to start the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is quite different from all the other mornings because this is a new morning. We ain't never had this one before. This is a new day, new chance, new opportunity, new blessings. Lord have mercy. Thank you for it. I'm so grateful to be here today. How about you? Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica uh, Jr., who is here on the way, and nephew Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Junior is here. He's just yeah. not on Zoom. Do I hear your voice, Junior? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, y'all. I'm here. I'm here, yeah. big dog. I'm always going to be here for you, dog. Are you okay? I can't man, see great, you on man. the Zoom. Do you have on a hat today or 
Yeah, I got a hat on. I got a hat on. We can see him. Uh, we can yeah, see him. No. Oh, well, let me. He got that hat on and he didn't give you. He, that's what he got on. He got the hat on. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the one I've been. Ooh, let's thank get you, it Tommy. started. Wait a minute, Tommy. <laughs> oh, oh, you going to come back starting mess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. Okay. Well, you want to ask where he been up? Uh, I've been here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why well, I don't see you? I you see everyone maybe, else? Oh, there maybe, that hat, maybe that big hat is blocking the camera view. Probably, oh. yeah, that's probably it. Oh. Oh, that's what you're doing, Tommy? Oh, we throwing we throwing darts today. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Because I'll tell you I one thing. Y'all. I know I, I know y'all. I know I know one thing. I'll be at work. I know that. That's where I'll be at. <laughs> hat be or at no work. hat, huh? Work mm-hmm. or no work. Show or no show. Next day I'm here. That's mm-hmm. what I be doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but, but I, like I told y'all I was working this. Didn't I say I was working? Didn't I say? <laughs> you said, what is a surprise? I don't even know why we talking about this. Yeah, of course you said you were working. But we all work. Yes, right. Right. What the what the right. the big discussion yesterday was? Why is it when Tommy works at night, he can't come to work in the morning? Well, listen, I didn't get to enjoy all of Juneteenth, so I took another <laughs> day so I could. Oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh okay, okay. Because it's not. Well, let me ask you a handbook. question. What handbook. was you enjoying about Juneteenth? What part of being free? Two years late was you celebrating. Let's get that. Well, I just wanted to be free on, um, you know, on the, the day holiday. that I wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> just free to do what I want to do. I didn't get to enjoy the Freedom Day, so I'm enjoying the Freedom Day. That's all. Don't don't let this body up. Jim, you brought all this up. <laughs> let it mess up <laughs> your day. <laughs> well, yeah. we here. Get past it. Get and over we, it. And we free. So no. Everybody's Let go and let God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's him. But Steve, so you don't want to mention to Tommy about the employee handbook discussion we had yesterday about this. Tommy Tommy has had that handbook since 2002. Cover to cover. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So, but what part in particular y'all talking about? Well, you pretty much all through it, but uh, (laughs) coming to work for your check is a huge part of it. We didn't really think we'd have to write that in, but obviously. <laughs> See, we're gonna have to. <laughs> All right, <laughs> boy. Today is a big, big day on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll run that prank back with the nephew, and then later this morning, 85 South will be here, right here yeah. on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. After this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. Welcome back, nephew. What you got? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what time it is. These are bed bugs. They are bed <laughs> bugs. Bed right. bugs. Let's go. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to speak to Shanice. Uh, she's not here right now. I'm going to take a message. Uh, you, do you know when she's coming back? Nah, is this a business call or something? Nah, nah, this is personal. I need to talk to her immediately. Nah, you need to talk to me. This is this a man. This, uh, who is this? This is this is Brandon. Who who who, who are you? I'm Ernest, man. But uh, why well, do you know Shanice? I I got a bit of a situation here, man. Uh, and it, it's basically a financial situation that I'm owed some money from her. So I kind of need to talk to her about about getting this money. Uh, is is totally disrupted my whole apartment, and I need to actually see about talking to her about getting this whole problem taken care of. What what's the what's the situation? What, what's, what's, the, what's going on? I mean, I, I'm basically right now. I'm twenty five hundred dollars in the rears due to due to Chinese, and I need to see if she's gonna be able to pay me for the situation or what. You know, do my girl owe you money? She she owes me twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars for what? I don't even know who you are. First of all, so what's up with the twenty five hundred dollars? Uh, man, first of all, my name is Brandon. Okay? okay, and I've been I I know I've been knowing Shanice probably for the last three or four months now. Okay, so the, here you you want to know it all in a nutshell is it's like this. Shanice been coming through. Okay, for the last three or four months, been coming over here to my spot to my apartment, hanging out. I'm just now finding out within the last two weeks, um, it's I had to get rid of my couch. I had to get rid of my mattresses. Because your mattress, because it's bed. Your mattress. Wait a minute, dude. Wait a minute. So you trying to tell me she was in your bed? Yeah, she been in my bed, dude. She been in your bed. Are you crazy? 
Hey man, come hey on man. now, dude. Listen, you know, you hey know dude, the problem is right not now. where she is. The problem is, is you talking about twenty five hundred dollars, you talking about my girl was in your bed. Now we not even gonna get into that. You understand what I'm saying? But that's twenty five hundred dollars you can forget about it. No, 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 no. Hold up, bro. First of all, you calling here you calling here, you calling here and here is do answer the phone and you still got the to ask for her and then go tell me about some twenty five hundred dollars about some mattress? Dude, I'm out my my mattresses, man, are a thousand bucks. It's full of bed bugs. I had to throw that away. Man, I'm not worried about no damn mattress, dude. You talking about my girl. We've been together for four years. I'm about to pop the question on her and you wanna sit there talking about she been hanging with you or kicking with you for the last four months. It's about to be over in a minute. Dude, Matter if you want to marry Shanice, cool. I don't care nothing about nah, that. Nah, hey, don't even worry about that now. But you over my phone talking about some damn mattress, man. That's that's a problem, dude. I ain't worried about no damn mattress. I'm worried about I ain't got problem, no dude. mattress you right now. You calling my house? You calling mine? Tell that stupid. Dude, I do not have a mattress right now, nor do I have a couch. Do you understand the problem? Care that about you, I don't care nothing about your mattress or couch, dude. I don't care nothing about that. Your name? You say your name, Brandon? I'm Brandon, yes. Yeah, Brandon, okay. Don't worry about it, Brandon, because you're going to find me real soon. Don't let me find you before you find me, though. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? Dude, dude, dude. No, no, hey, no. You, can have, you can have them bed bugs and that mattress or whatever. Answer these for all I care. But what I'm saying is, if you talk about some bed bugs, ain't no bed bugs over here. Okay, so, so what's she getting the bed bugs from? from? She done brought them over here to my place. I don't care nothing about it. She ain't bring nothing over there, first of all. But I ain't, that ain't even a problem right now. Dude, you so you, 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 you call me been over here, here, man. I ain't had nobody else over here. Right, don't worry about who you had over there, but you don't go call here talking about no money. You ain't getting nothing from here. Okay, first of all, dude, check this out. I don't have a problem with you, okay? Me and you cool. No, me we you got cool. a problem. We already got a problem. You calling me talking about you been sleeping with my brother. Hey, dog, dog, once I'm going to say it again. Me and you cool, dog. We cool. Dude, we not cool. We not cool. First dog, of all, dog, I'm going to find out who you are. I'm going to handle Sinise myself. I'm going to handle, handle you later. What you, what, you, what you talking about? You, you going to handle me. I'm going to handle you later. You want a mattress, right? Hey, hey, dude. dude you want a mattress, right? Go ahead and marry Shanice. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. My no problem is about getting that. my money back, man, for the, for the property of mine that she has ruined, man. I, don't worry about that. I'm going to get you a mattress. Don't worry about that. It's going to be a casket wrapped around that though. No. Hey, hey, dude, dude. Why are you sitting here creating the drama with me when me, me and you, we ain't even the problem? The problem is Shanice. The problem is you picked up your phone and you called here. That's the problem. Okay. Now you got okay, two so problems. Dude. You ain't got no couch. You ain't got no mattress. Now you got to do that. You understand what I'm saying? You know what? I, I see I can't talk to you. When do Shanice get home, man? Don't worry about when Shanice get home. Okay. What you need to worry about is when I find you. Okay, so so when, when I, you going to have my money then when you find me? Because I need my money. Yeah, I'm going to have your money. I'm going to have your mattress too. Please understand. You're going to be resting real well. Okay. Okay, so so let me ask you this here, man. Shanice bring bed bugs over to my house, leave them all in my mattress, leave them all on my couch where I got to throw my stuff away. Where I'm wrong at, man? Where I'm wrong? I'm going to ask you straight up. Did you know she had a man? Say what? Did you know she had a man? But I, I mean, kind of, kind of, sort of, but not really, though. I know kind of, sort of, man. Either you know she got a man or she don't got a man. You knew she had a man, right, and you still win D, right? Hey, dog, I ain't got nothing to do with y'all, man. I, I, I'm dealing with these bed bugs. You understand what I'm saying? Dude, do you understand you messing up a, a four-year relationship? You know how much time I put in with this woman? Four hey, years. Hey. Four years, we about, to get, we about to get married. And you calling here with this When are y'all supposed to get married? Don't worry about when we supposed to get married, man. You messed that all up. What I'm trying to explain to you is, dude, you calling here on some bed bug which I know she ain't got nothing to do with, but the fact that you told me that she was over your house, in your bed, that's over. It's over now. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when she get home, I'm going to deal with that. You understand what I'm saying? That's going to get dealt with. I'm walking up out of here. But when I leave here, please believe my next stop is to come find your ass. First of all, how did you get the number to this apartment? That's what I want to know. Hey, dude, she gave me both numbers, the cell phone number and the house number, and told me, you know, if it's an emergency, call the house. Okay, and this is an emergency? Yeah, this is an emergency. I well, got bad learn, bugs, look, man. Learn, learn, learn another emergency number. Learn 911, because when I come knocking on your door, either you come out and you handle it, or you better call the cops. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? <sighs> hey, man, do you think Tommy will pay for the bad bugs? Who is Tommy? I'm just saying, do you think Tommy will pay for the bed, bro? Hey, who the f is Tommy? Tommy, dog. Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ernest, you just got pranked by your girl, Shanice. <laughs> man, y'all, y'all. You all right, man? Boy, hey. Well, it was over. 
It was over. You understand what I'm telling you? It was over. Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, it is the Chief Love Officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, we have the hottest comedy trio in the game right now that some have called the new kings of comedy. It's 85 South. That's Chico Bean, DC Youngfly, and Carlos Miller. We'll talk to them in just a bit because yeah. right now it yeah. is time. I can't wait, right? right. <laughs> They're so crazy. <laughs> right now it is time to ask the CLO with our chief love officer, Steve Harvey, in the building. This one's from Allegra in Birmingham, CLO. Allegra writes, my boyfriend and I split up after my dog chewed up one of his expensive sneakers. Uh-oh. He acted like uh, he, he could not replace the shoes. He said it was easier to replace me. Does it sound crazy for a 26-year-old man to pick shoes over a woman? <laughs> well, does it, does it crazy for you to want? I, I, I mean, look, you found out where you stood. Your dog ate up his shoe. Shoe. He said it's easier to replace you than a shoe. Ooh. Now you saying is that crazy? No. If he likes shoes better than you, he <laughs> he, he, he 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 clear on where he at. Yes. He likes it's his shoes better stays. than he like you. Mm -hmm. Now is it crazy? 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 Why you wondering about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, told is, you. That's he crazy. Told you. <laughs> oh yeah, you didn't have nothing walking. right there. Yeah, mm -mm, mm -mm, you ain't five. even worth a shoe. <laughs> Dang, <Yeah>. you're not <laughs> even a shoe, Chris <laughs> Shirley. All right, uh, moving on to Honey in West Philly, who says my aunt met and married a man within 90 days of meeting him. This man was my sugar daddy when I was in my 20s, and I have a few photos with him on my Facebook page. Do I show Auntie the pictures or let her live happily ever after? No. Why would you show her the pictures? He was your That's sugar daddy stupid. when you was in your 20s. You ain't in your 20s no more. Leave them alone. That was in the past. You ain't in the 20s no more. Why? Why do that? Leave the past in the past. I'm going to tell you something, man. You, you keep bringing up people's past. Yours come with it. Ooh. Remember that yours that come with it. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I don't get on about it. I remember when you, because the next conversation, they're going to go, well, I remember when you. Yeah, what and about when you? See, yeah. see. Well, wasn't you there? Mm -hmm. It's like a lady one time told me, was in Vegas, and I came out of the bathroom, and she had been standing on the wall watching me shoot crap. I came out the bathroom, she said, I'm so disappointed in you. I said, what's the matter? Man? I thought she was Christian. I said, I am. She said, I've been standing here in this casino. I, oh, here at this crap table, you've been shooting dice for two hours. I said, well, you was in here. Yeah. Right. And at the crap table. The only way for you to see me yeah. at the crap table, you had to be over there by the crap table. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because the now you think ain't going to let you stand around. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you think. Some down on the table. Because <laughs> you was in the den of iniquity. You mm. think just because you were standing there, you don't get to go with the rest of them? Right. Mm. No, you was in the same heat. You was in the car that did the drive-by shooting. You didn't put the gun out the window, but when they pulled the car off, everybody in the car get the same time. Yep. Mm. All right? Yep. Honey. Welcome to my world. I've been standing here watching you. Okay, well, you was in here. <laughs> You're judging me? <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on to Kentrella. Kentrella in Macon says, I have two men in my life. One of them puts it down in the bedroom, and the other one puts it down in the boardroom. It's been my experience that you can't get both good sex and financial stability from one man. Why can't a man do both? Come on. You ain't good enough to get either one of them. So what's what's Ooh. the matter with you? Okay, one more time. <laughs> See, you ain't good shade. enough to get either one of them. So Ooh. what's wrong with you? Ooh. You got one man that's good in the boardroom and one man that's good in the bedroom, but you ain't got either one of them men. Mm -hmm. But both of them got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So what you worried about? How come a man can't be good yeah, in the bedroom and the boardroom? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. But why you got to be everybody? Thanks. <laughs> mm. Oh, I didn't want to say thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. But we'll move on. Hello. We'll move on. Last one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Last just asking. One. Why can't they be both? Yeah. Well, how come you ain't? I, you don't belong to nobody. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought why don't nobody want you? <sighs> 
All right. We're and a lot of men is just good as they got to be. He mm. good in the boardroom. Maybe he ain't got to be good in the bedroom. He got you anyway. And the dude that's real good in the bedroom, he ain't got to give you no money because he getting all the tail he want. Ooh, so uh-oh. you just available. Hell. For whatever somebody needs, you just available. And now you want to know how come a man can't be good. You wouldn't know because you don't have a man. She said she has two men in her life. That's how she In her at. life. That's how she looks at it. But yeah. she ain't got two men that want her in their life. Mm. 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 Having a man in your life and and having a man which you can make a life, them two different things. In your life and make a life is two different things. That is Don't true. nobody want to make no life with you. They just want to be in your life. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, moving on. Last one, Steve. Last one. Dorothy in Scranton says, my husband has an hour commute to and from work. And he texts me when he's headed from home daily. He texts me when he's headed home daily. He was spotted in a mall midday yesterday, and I thought he was working. I called, and he said he got off early. Why couldn't he tell me that? Mm. You you want to know. I don't understand the question. Well, okay. I'll, I'll read it again. It's her husband. He has an hour commute to and from work. Both work both ways. He texts her when he's headed home daily, and uh, he was spotted in the mall in the afternoon, midday yesterday. And sh- and she says she thought he was working, and she called, and he said he got off early. But why couldn't he just tell her that? Well, that because he if he told you he got off early, then he wouldn't be able to enjoy his time. So he didn't want to Thank tell you. you nothing, because telling you the truth would have resulted in something else. Her asking him to come home. Well, so he, he didn't off, tell you. Home. He didn't tell you, I'm off. I won't come home. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't want to run home to you every day. Damn. (laughs) He needed some me time. Other than that drive, he just needed some me time. So that's what it was. Okay. That's a thank you. He was spotted in the mall. By himself. By himself. He was in the mall just enjoying himself. Walking around. By himself? Did I say it wrong? No, you no, said it right. Yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm so wrong. I can't even. All right. Uh, coming up next, it is the boys from 85 South. We have been waiting for Chico Bean, Carlos Miller, and DC Young Fly. Well, they will be here right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hi, I'm Yvonne So, and I'm a full time stay at home mom of three school age boys. Moms are the backbone of our society and the stars of my podcast, Cashing Our Trillions. Cashing Our Trillions spotlights moms, how we sustain this one and a half trillion dollar economy of unpaid female work and the social and structural changes needed to prioritize us. This season, my guests include Moms First founder, Reshma Shojani. We have to finish the fight for moms. Springboard to Opportunities founding CEO, Aisha Yandara. We really have been changing the way that we talk about poverty in this country. And Michigan State Senator, Mallory McMorrow. We need to set up a system where there can be more moms in office. We'll discuss all things mom, from Web3 and the metaverse to co-housing, politically activating suburban moms, and de-stressing with CBD. Search for Cashing Our Trillions on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Why is La Isla Bonita one of her most famous songs? So when you're wrong, are you often long words like this? Because you should really like slow it yes. down, listen, okay. and then get to the right Yes, okay. she is. That's okay. what this whole okay, podcast okay. is. It's just Fran being wrong at length. Rose. Fran, how do we make it to the second season of our podcast and we still have all these opinions? Ah. Uh, Pardon my non-binary vibe, but I'm just like, (laughs) does it all need to be explained? Pat took the glasses off her face, put them on America, (gasps) and those are Betty's glasses. That's so shit. Yes! The Forgotten Madonna album. Forgotten by the world, maybe, but not by me. And not by me. Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. But I have it. (laughs) But I have it. Period! Father, son, house of Gucci. Like a Virgin is proud to be a part of the Outspoken Network from iHeart Podcasts. Listen on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
All right, everybody. Uh, as promised, we got our special guest this morning on the show. I've been waiting on this one right here. Oh, uh, I thought the Kings was ignorant. <laughs> we we they don't are, even we uh, pale it. No, no. I'm telling you right now. I was with these cats for five years. Uh huh. We pale in comparison on the ignorant scale. <laughs> I think it was because we was all older. This is okay. the younger version of the Kings. <laughs> the hip-hop version of the Kings. Mm. This is ignorance at a highest level. I'm talking about unrestrained, no restrictions, <laughs> don't know the rules, rewrote the rules. <laughs> they just ass out ignorant. Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> The damn, I, they've done something I've never thought would be done. Especially, I have saw Second City TV. They've gone bigger than Second City TV. I've watched improv groups come together, and it's not the same thing. I never thought it could be done. They've turned around, they've turned an improv troupe into a touring worldwide phenom. It's called 85 South. Mm -hmm. It's Chico Bean, DC Young Fly, and Carlos Miller. They got a new Netflix <laughs> special called Ghetto Legends. They're the stars of the Three-Headed Monster Tour. These damn boys right here is all of that plus some. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for 85 South. Oh, Come yeah, on yeah. here. Yeah. Yes, Good sir. morning. Yeah, brothers, how y'all doing? Man, yeah. man, not as good as I was before I came to another house of yours. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm sick one? of this, man. I bet, listen, I, I did Steve Charity events, right? And I just heard, heard people just talking about how much charity Steve has given. And then they had me come up and speak. And I was like, Steve ain't never did nothing but show me how much better he living than me. That's all he ever did for me. Uh, yeah, just let me in show up and just see how much harder I got to work. He never gave me nothing. Then I come to the man cave of another house, and he got a whole downstairs closet in the man cave. That ain't no cave, sir. That is a village that you live in. This is a man village. Don't call this no cave. I got a man cave is one room in one my room. house. It's beautiful. This got an upstairs You ain't, you ain't down. got more closets in your house? You only got one closet? I don't have a closet in my one. man cave. I about to say, that's the other room. rooms ain't got no closet. Yeah, but not in the room that's a man cave. That's oh, a room. I thought I was stunned because I got an air fryer in mine. No. <laughs> Hold up, hold up. You got an air fryer. I got an air fryer, my man. You be in there cooking sometimes? <laughs> sometimes. All the time. Most of it. ain't got no man. Man, I'm going to tell y'all something. It's, it's my pleasure to have y'all here, man. Uh, first time on the show, man, as a unit, man. Uh, like I was saying in the intro, these brothers have accomplished something, man, that I just didn't know was doable. They took improv comedy and made it work to the point where it's not only working, they killing it. They selling out theaters, man. Do you know this has never Bring been us. done in black comedy? It's never really been done in comedy, period, because Second City, who had the biggest improv troupe ever, it was more than 20 some people. Mm -hmm. They still wasn't selling out arenas. They was just doing comedy club dates. These cats can put themselves together and create something that has never, ever been done in comedy. And I know it ain't been done in black comedy because I am a student of this game. Mm -hmm. I know what this is. I know who the greats are. And these cats are ghetto legends, man. They will go down in history as the first and probably the only ones that's ever going to do it like this. How did y'all come up with the concept of 85 South? It's a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long journey, but it's about brothers just believing in each other. And this whole foundation is literally keeping God first and just believing in your brother's dream. It was always, hey, come rock with me. Matter of fact, come on, everybody do this. And we always like, what is it? And every every step and every day we would learn something new. Like we didn't know what we was doing in the beginning. Like it was podcast, literally just like this. And then before you know it, we went on the road. And then when we went on the road, it was like so I when we first so, so started, wait. I was like, they want to see us do this live. So wait, so y'all started as a podcast. Right. Which technically yeah. still is a podcast. Yeah, it still is a we podcast. is a podcast. We just got different branches of what we do with yeah. the podcast. There's levels to it. 
two yep. levels. Like we got a we got an in studio segment, and then it's a live segment, and then it's it's the it's the individual segment of it. So it's it's all together, like because you all tour individually. Yeah, yeah. right, most yeah. definitely, and that's that's the gas that keep all this going. Yeah. If we didn't have no demand for them to see us by ourselves, then none of this would work. Right. So it's like. It's like working two jobs at once. So we go out and do our own dates, our own club shows, and our own everything. And people still will come out and just see us do 85 South Show. Because it's a different so the, element. So the, it's the thing is, we never practice what we're going to do before we go on stage. We'll no There's sometimes where we don't see each other until right before we hit the stage. But like it's, it's like DC said, it's a certain element of just the God that's involved in the universe that's involved that put us together and makes us to where you don't have to have no rehearsal. You can go out and whatever it is that comes to our mind, we trust each other on stage. I, I'm just going to say, I believe him. When we go on stage, like, I, when I go on by myself, you know, everybody get the jitters. Yeah, you yeah. know, you're like, okay, that's right. I go out there. Whew. But when I'm about to go on stage with my brothers, I'm excited. I'm like, ooh, I could be the young, wow, and hey. <laughs> Dude. That's what they want to see? Oh, yeah. I'm finna turn up, but I'm with my brothers and they support me. You see what I'm saying? So it's more so, oh, my bad. Yeah, the N-word. This, 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 this is the timeout. Oh, you gonna have to believe it. <laughs> 30. He, he done wrote a note that said, don't say <laughs> on the <a> note. <laughs> You didn't wrote a post it note, but you say don't. But they didn't read the note, though. No. Yeah. Right. Like, what in the world? <laughs> you don't get this zesty oh ass. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. These boys. So the real man. Hey, 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 we got more. We just going to beep over the top of it. Don't yeah, worry about it. We got say, more, because I don't want nobody to take nothing out they say. Do your job, Dave. We'll be right back with more 85 <laughs> South. <laughs> as long as we on the air, wow. we'll be back. It's <laughs> What is, what is this, man? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, y'all, we're back. Our special guest this morning is the uh, Ghetto Legends, 85 South, yeah. Carlos Miller, yeah. Kiko Bean, and DC Young Fly. They're all here live in the studio with us. We're talking about how they got started, but now, man, this thing went crazy. We got a new Netflix special. Yeah, yes, sir. Let's talk yes, sir. about it. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing, especially like you were saying, like just the how unorthodox this is. And it's right. like for us to just be collectively putting our talents on the table and to go. And like you said, land of fish as big as Netflix. That's crazy to me. That's big. Yeah. Like, nobody even understood what we were doing at first. And now for, you know, for it to be Netflix, one of the biggest platforms out. Right. Everybody's gonna get to see and you know give their feedback. So it's, it's just a situation where it's a group. It's a group effort. You know, it's my first comedy special, but I get to do it with my brothers. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I take I take more pride in that. Wow. Than me just going out there doing a special by myself. You yeah. feel me? I'm like I don't want to. I don't have to. Yeah. Look what I'm doing with my family. Right. You feel me? That's the goal to always do it with your family and friends anyway. So it's like it's it's never an individual thing when it comes to this situation. It's always what we're doing as a collective and like look how we started and look what we're doing now. Like we was just doing something for us to be like iron shop and iron. That's basically what it was. It was more so like, hey man, you ain't got nothing else to do. You can work on your timing. You can work on your punches. But then it was like, look, God just kept opening more doors and was like, look, look at that. Look at that. And then it's like, we had Netflix and it's like, bro, we didn't think about this seven years ago. And the game had changed, but at the same time, we still, you know, like you said, you student of the game, we students of the game. So we understand that now Netflix is the, you know, what the HBO special was. 15, 10, 15 for sure. years ago. Yeah, right. That's what it is now. So for us to, to be at this point in the game and have that level of solidification, it gives us the same energy that you guys produce for us to be able to follow in the footsteps and even know that the, the you know foundation is a little different now as far as the springboard to get into the next level. We still have been able to you know follow the blueprint and Max. in today's time, we've been able to reach the biggest platform now for comedy in our time. Absolutely. So, you know I, mean, I mean, look, man, like like you said, the springboard has changed. Yeah. But the work ethic is the same. It's the same. I it's don't the same. give a damn who you are. Y'all got social media. Got yes, it. And, and, yeah, and y'all done milked it to the hilt. But nothing replaces the work ethic. Right. And a lot of huge part of y'all's success is just y'all hustling grind is unparalleled with these cats out here, man. Right. And and dudes be looking at y'all, how they doing that, how they doing that. Well, they grinding harder than y'all. Mm -hmm. 
you know, mm-hmm. like you said, it's mm-hmm. you know, show business is two words, show and business. So when you are blessed to be able to to do both of those with people that you love and that you actually have a beautiful relationship with, I think that's what makes it different. The fact that we actually love each other and rock with each other, you can feel that. Because a lot of guys, you know, they ain't really partners, you know what yeah. I mean? But we are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all, stay with, stay right with us. With uh, we family. got more from 85 South when we come back. I'm going to try to get them to describe this special. Mm. Ignit. Yeah, that's pretty oh, much there it. you go. It's <laughs> well, we'll see y'all in a minute. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody. Uh, we're back. Our special guest this morning is the legends, the ghetto legends, uh, 85 South, the new H, uh, uh, the new Netflix special. I almost said HBO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're right, because that's what Netflix is now. Today, it's what man. HBO used to be. Mm-hmm. My first special was a half hour special. My second special was an hour special. And that's when you knew you was doing something when you had an HBO special. Mm-hmm. Now it is Netflix. Mm-hmm. Netflix is the best. I seen that now. special, Steve. Your suit was wrinkly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you better stop playing that. Downstairs. <laughs> Here, go get it. It sure <laughs> is. It's downstairs right now. Everything I've ever worn is downstairs. Ah, <laughs> but man, it's uh, net, man. So, 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 so the Netflix special is called Ghetto Legends. Yes, sir. Yeah, because yes, you know they took the Ghetto Legends out the picture for a minute. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tell us about it. You know, it was just a, a, a period of comedy where it was just like, there wasn't no, wasn't no essence into it. Like, mm. after the Kings of Comedy, it's just like, Everybody just kind of scattered. Mm-hmm. You know That's what I'm saying? Mean. Like you said, it wasn't nobody on no teamwork like that. Right. No. Like, so that's what I wanted to get back to. Like, when you watch Def Comedy Jam, you weren't watching for just one person. You wanted to yeah. see the whole show. Right. You wanted right. to see who that had on here. Even if you didn't know him, it was still exciting because it's like, they made it to this platform, so they got to be this kind of good. Right. And that's what I felt like was missing from the whole comedy game. Well, you're right, man. It, it sort of went away, man. That's why I keep looking at how fascinating what it is y'all do, because y'all on some whole nother stuff, man. I don't even know how you came up with this idea. Cause I, 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 when I heard about it, I said, that ain't going to work. Right. It can't it. work. Yeah, you know what I mean? But the thing about it is, like, dude, <laughs> you know... I think people have a different perspective on what the spotlight is versus, do you mean, from your generation to our generation? Yeah. The spotlight was, you know, it, yeah, I guess y'all felt like it only could be on one person at a time. Right. You know, for us, we understand that, man, it's enough light for everybody up here. We just got to make sure that we understand that the light is shining this way, this way, or this way. So right. It's just a navigation. And that's what the special is. It's basically showing people another element of comedy. Because when I hear, like, guys like you and DL and all y'all that come up to us and tell us how crazy it is, what we're doing to us is like you know we doing what we it's not naturally right. do you know right. what i mean this is what we do when like you said we before we start recording we was tripping that's what we do regardless <laughs> right. like so the fact that people pay to see us and want to see us do that and now we had a platform to be able to take it worldwide and give that promo to the you know we have been doing specials for years everything we shoot could be a special right in comparison been to the, what the game and we was giving it away for free so now with Netflix coming in, it gives us an opportunity to give it away in a way to where we can kind of see some of the return as far as people who might not be hip to what we've been doing for the past seven years. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, man, because you all, I, it, it just, the reason I didn't see it, because just didn't think it was doable. I'm going to tell you why you ain't think it was doable. You ain't think splitting the money. You ain't never split no money. <laughs> <laughs> in the right name there. of Jesus. Right there. Right there. In the name of Jesus. That's what it is, Steve. Yes, right. the, 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 the Kings damn near broke up the first night. No, when it came because, time to get paid. Yeah, you because know, I, I was trying to figure out what this dude was talking about. Right, because he was talking about you don't get paid tonight. You get paid after we finish the dates. No, nah, on, on this weekend. No, 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 like no, no, no. I get my money when I walk off. Right, right, right. So we, you know, we work through it. What you all have done, I guess, because nobody told you you couldn't. Right, and y'all just didn't listen to it. And it's been a phenom to me, man. It's really been shocking to me. I talked to Sid about it. I talked to DL about it. I done talked to Chappelle about it. I done talked to Rock about it. Cause when we, we hey man, cause when we, when we get together, it's a different type of meeting. That's what I, that's and what I want to know. Like, what, 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 what is them OGs saying? about the 85 South. In that I, group, I cannot believe they pulled this off. There's mm-hmm. no way we could have did it because we were too individual. Mm-hmm. If I'm talking, you waiting on me to take a breath? 
right. and then you gonna say something? Right. No, dog, you can't do that. We came from that Richard Pryor mindset. We didn't know. Nobody told y'all it wasn't doable, and it's tripping us out. And we all watch it. Chappelle watch y'all. Man, listen. Rock watch y'all. You told me Eddie crazy. Murphy was talking about us. Dog, mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy. I'm sitting at Eddie's house. Y'all, y'all don't know, man. But y'all done put a crease in the game man, with the old heads, man. That we know coming to get all we'll the money you left on the table. Negroes, my bad. We'll be back. My bad. Right my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. We're back. Uh, Steve Harvey Morning Show. Our special guest this morning has been Phil. You listen. <laughs> they here. We love them. They here. <laughs> 85 South. Yeah. I, I really Steve did, though. Slipped up. I really did, because off the air, I'm just really shaming myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. These boys have got me in here loose like I ain't got no career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad this is off the air, because all this go. What did Steve? I'll be on the internet. I'll be on TMD tonight. <laughs> Look at how many times Steve Harvey said this on the air. <laughs> but uh, they're here today, and we've been promoting the new Netflix uh, special called Ghetto Legends, uh, which is out now yeah, yes. on Netflix, man. Check that out. And for those of you that who have never seen what they do, you have got to go to Netflix and check out 85 South special Ghetto Legends because you yeah. will see a brand of comedy that I just didn't. I, look, man, when I tell y'all I've talked to everybody about this, mm-hmm. nobody has an understanding, but they all love it. And they say, hey, man, we ought to get together and do that. I said, well, you know, you don't know how. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you, no, seriously. You, you, you all been individuals way too long. Right. Y'all ain't going to share no stage and no mic. You ain't going to let nobody get no whole thought out. <laughs> and, a whole and, thought and, out. And, and, and then you all have a chemistry. Because I've watched you closely. You all know when to let something go. Mm-hmm. Man, I just saw y'all. Y'all done put a band on stage. Y'all know when to let something go. You know when to let a guy go. And it's not no jump. It's it's nobody talking over each other where it's mayhem. It is the most organized corruption I've <laughs> ever seen in my life. Organized chaos. It's got organized the nerve chaos. to be damn funny. I be sitting up here hollering at Now, I don't know why people pay to come to this. You know? Because, because if they sitting there, they hear what kill me when they when they try to get involved. That's when they asked and signed up for way more. <laughs> way than more. They thought. Yeah, they did. Do me. Do me. <laughs> Ooh, pick me. Right. Oh, what your fat ass got on? <laughs> and then you'll do the whole roll. Yeah. yeah. Look at these heifers with all these Skittles on their head. I be right. going. <laughs> and they have the different color whip, man, y'all. But, but I they think bring that, them that's the element of the show that people love, though. It's like yes. the fact that, you know, it, when you come to our show, you it's a it's like you come into the family cookout. You yeah. know what I mean? And not only are we talk about you, but we talk about ourselves and each other and all yeah. of that, too. It's, not, it's it's a safe space in regards to coming. It's not it's a free, judgment-free zone. You can come be who you are. We got people that come in wheelchairs, people that come bring their kids. A dude brought a dog to the show. Yeah, he brought a dog. <laughs> Oh, whole dog. service dog. dog. I think he was oh, trying to sell dog. it, but it was in there. Service you know dog. what I mean? The dog was blind, though. <laughs> With no <laughs> leash or you nothing. Got a like blind that. service dog. He, that's no service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was, you know, so. A dog that don't provide the service. That, don't yeah, provide yeah. the service. I want to give a disclaimer because people think you got to be messed up to get talked about at the show. You don't. Right. You can no. be clean as hell. With yeah. Do uh-huh. everything and you still going to get. Oh, hey, man. Yeah. One time I saw a security guard come up to the front of the stage and he was an old white guy. Oh, and y'all was messed with the guy. Yeah. Right. And he said, what's your name? Richard. What they call you? He said, Big Big <laughs> and walked off. Yeah. But y- the greatness in y'all was y'all let him have that. Oh, yeah. This, was a, oh, this dude had to be 70, yeah. 75 years old. He said, name Richard. He said, what they call you, Richard? He said, big <laughs> And he turned around and walked off. Walked and out y'all like the king. stood there And like, we just stood there and the band stopped playing. But do 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 And the yeah. audience went crazy. He waving. Yeah. I yeah. said, <laughs> but the, the, the genius of it was y'all let him have that moment. Y'all let him win. We live mm-hmm. We live in the moment. See, that was crazy because the, at the average young dude, but, oh, you ain't no big. You got, no. uh, you know mm-hmm. y'all small. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't got well, no, no, I no. wasn't repeating that, so. Y'all, you know, <laughs> y'all <laughs> let him have that. Right. I said, these dudes get it. Because these it's it's dudes. like a, it's like a, 
a situation and an energy where it's like, we 85 South, but the people are 85 South as well. So it's like, we don't ever want to be on a certain pedestal where, where we can't, where make we can't like that. reach you. We are you. We're just yeah. examples of you can make it if you keep God first and you just stay working. You see what I'm saying? So when we have those type of moments, it's like, man, the white man just went crazy on us. On and y'all be scared that we going to go crazy on and you. Was, and uh, look at it. And, and he said it to me. I went and, you know and, what I mean? And I, we and, not only that, we boosted them up. Like, yeah. did you hear that? Dog, no, that was the <laughs> greatness of it. Because the average person, to, see, to be a host, a great host, you have to be gracious, right? Because if you're not gracious, man, it can't always be about you. You got to let your guests win when they can yes, win. Sir. Now, when they excuse ain't nothing, me. you got to take over. Wait, excuse me. Did you say it, it doesn't always have to be about you? I just want to let the record oh, show that. You but, said yeah, that. But, but, oh, oh, sure. oh, but this oh, right here okay. is the Steve just Harvey testing. morning. <laughs> see, 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 Chico, what I don't do, I don't listen to none of that right there. Because they, they will take a shot at me whenever they get it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're supposed to. Especially oh, yeah. Shirley. You the OG. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Shirley. Shirley yeah. will take a shot. Uh -huh. But Shirley, no, I don't care. Uh -huh. And I've, I've done like a very ego e e e e e egotistical thing in my career. Everything really? I do, I put my name on. Talk to your time. Yeah. yeah, because see, guess what? When you cancel my show, you don't get to keep the signage or nothing. You got to start over. Yeah. You got to start over. Uh, take all that lights smart. down. Yeah. Yeah. Take all I'm that wood that. down. Yeah. Yeah. I got mustache and bald heads yeah. on top of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, so when these white folks cancel me, you know what? I got something for you. Got at least you got to clear the whole building I up. I just thought about that. Bro. You had the Steve Harvey show, and your name was Mr. Hightower. I was Bruh. Like <laughs> Bruh. Bro, when Wendy Williams left, they just moved people in her set. Uh-uh. Right. No, no. Right. When you try to get rid of me. Right. You got to get rid of everything. You got to start over. I'm going to cost you millions. Right. <laughs> yeah, you. I ain't the only one finna be out of millions. Right. Oh, no, no, no. You cancel the show. Steve, you're going to be out of some millions. You too. Right. <laughs> you had the wall got to go down. All, walls. That's me on all the paintings. Can't have nothing, bro. Always remember that. Got to go. I brands myself. Even when I was on Showtime at Apollo, man, it was Showtime at Apollo starring Steve Harvey. And mm. after that, it was never the same. Because I do stuff in a way, man, where you get rid of me, but mm. you're not... No, can't okay. replace me. No, man. And, bro, listen, you all are the types of dudes where you do something that's so unique that it's going to be irreplaceable. Now, see, the next troop that comes along and try to be three or four, mm -hmm. they got to they got, they got walk out there on that thick tar, y'all. Yeah, they're going to have to be like actual it's, it's gonna blood be brothers. They ain't going to be able to just but pull this no, But they're going to have to have the same mama and the same daddy. But that still ain't going to work. <laughs> but, that's the, but, see, this the thing. I feel like all three of us have the same... Wisdom, mature, moral background. You dig what I'm saying? And we all fans of each other. Like how you said, the OG's like, let's get on there. You like, no, you more of an individual. I'm an individual. They're an individual. And we ain't gonna never let each other share the time. We more so when we be on stage, when they talking, I be listening. And vice versa, all the way. I'm, I'm like, oh, he about to say to something. I'm like, this. What, what you about to say? Yeah. <laughs> because cause I know you're gonna end up bringing something out of me. So I'm more so like, because I love improv. Say something to make me do something, cause I don't know what I'm gonna do. Right. So I, I love wanna it. hear I wanna hear what you got to say. I love it, cause I love to see like we fans of each other. Right. I, I would love to see at any given night Chico or DC go out there and rock the whole arena. You know what I mean? And like let the people love them. In at, at, at any given time, it's like That's a beautiful thing. We I, all do that. Like, it it and, makes us happy. Like, and y'all all win. And, it, right. and and the thing is the genuine nature of the laughs, cause we don't know they coming. Right. Like it's no rehearsal. So we don't know what is That's gonna be. That's the crazy said. part. Right. Like I'm talking about these two dudes, man. I'd have been crying I mean, on stage. Tears. I, you never know just the type of stuff that is said on stage and it's all and then after shows, we'll be like, bro, when you said this. So you said that because we were we recapping what we didn't know we was going to do. Yeah. Hey, listen, man, I know we got to get out of here, but I do want to come back. We got to finish the radio. I'm no, not getting out of here for I a minute. I want to say something. <laughs> I'm staying uh, here. And I want D.C. to say something. I want to talk to D.C. on a personal level mm -hmm. uh, about his life and what's going on and these brothers' love they have for one another. So we're going to... 
take a little serious turn before we come back. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Why is La Isla Bonita one of her most famous songs? So when you're wrong, are you often long words like this? Because you should really like slow it <laughs> yes. down, listen, okay. and get to the right yes, okay. is. That's okay. what this whole okay, podcast okay. is. It's just Fran being wrong at length. Rose. Fran, how did we make it to the second season of our podcast and we still have all these opinions? Uh, pardon my non-binary vibes, but I'm just like, <laughs> does it all need to be explained? Pat took the glasses off her face, put them on America, <gasps> and those are Betty's glasses. That's so shit. Yes! <laughs> a forgotten Madonna album. Forgotten by the world, maybe, but not by and me. Not, and not by me. Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. But I have it. <laughs> but I have it. Period! <laughs> Father, son, house of Gucci. Like a Virgin is proud to be a part of the Outspoken Network from iHeart Podcasts. Listen on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Yvonne So, and I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom of three school-age boys. Moms are the backbone of our society, and the stars of my podcast, Cashing Our Trillions. Cashing Our Trillions spotlights moms, how we sustain this $1.5 trillion economy of unpaid female work, and the social and structural changes needed to prioritize us. This season, my guests include Moms First founder, Reshma Shojani. We have to finish the fight for moms. Springboard to Opportunities founding CEO, Aisha Yandar. We really have been changing the way that we talk about poverty in this country. And Michigan State Senator, Mallory McMorrow. We need to set up a system where there can be more moms in office. We'll discuss all things mom, from Web3 and the metaverse to co-housing, politically activating suburban moms, and de-stressing with CBD. Search for Cashing Our Trillions on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject big and hot for the wrong reasons. Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband and I have been together for almost 15 years, and we used to be very active sexually, but it has slowed down a lot in the past two years because we've both gained a lot of weight. I've told him I don't feel sexy most of the time, and I am dealing with some health issues because of the weight gain. I suggested we work out, and whenever we try... He makes it sexual. He makes everything sexual. I also suggested that we finally get the king-sized bed that we've been needing for years. He loves to cuddle up under me in our queen bed. Our ceiling fan in the room is broken. So imagine how hot it is with two oversized people in a smaller bed. He lies there every night wanting to spoon, and his hand is usually under my boobies, and his naked body is pressed up against mine. I am usually drenched from head to toe several times throughout the night, and he wants to be intimate when we wake up. I'm sick of it, and I told him to fix the fan and get a bigger bed for us. I showed him several beds with good financing that we can go look at. He said a king bed would make it harder to cuddle, and I'm already running from him in the queen bed. He's ignoring the elephant in the room, literally. (laughs) He is a big man, and that body heat is unbearable at night. We can't seem to get to the gym, and he goes and buys junk food whenever I cook healthy meals. I still love him to death, and I want him to be healthy, and I'm trying, and he's not. I'll give it to him every day in every way if he will work on his weight with me. Granted, he's 6'3", so he's carrying the weight well, but he's wide. Since he won't agree to do anything I've asked him to, should I go against his wishes and order us a king-size bed? 
Well, first of all, I just got to say, this is so sweet. I mean, this is really, really sweet. I know you're frustrated uh, right now because I, I just had to say that. I, I really did because I love the fact that your husband still finds you sexy and attractive and desirable, even though you don't feel that way about yourself. Uh, yes, no matter that you've gained weight and a lot of it, you say, he still wants to cuddle with you and be close to you and be intimate with you and, and when the love is still there because you say you love him to death when the love is still there I think you guys have something to work with here usually we get strawberry letters where the husband and wife are complaining that they don't look the same you know as when they first met so they're thinking about cheating and the, you know the weight is a turn off all of that but not your man uh, and that's a good thing but you have to be comfortable too you have to be respected too um, I say if you can afford it go ahead and and order the king bed and let him know that you are serious about changing and getting healthy. If he loves you, and I think he does, according to what you've said in this letter, uh, you know, have a serious talk with him and you guys find a way where you can both get what you want and be happy. Life is too short. Steve? Well, <laughs> Shirley opened her letter with, this is so sweet. It is so sweet. I don't know what damn letter you read. <laughs> I love this letter. I saw the pain and agony all through this damn letter. <laughs> Two people been together 15 years. Used to have a very, very active sexually. But then it slowed down a whole lot in these last two years. Why? Because we've both, both of us, have gained a lot of weight. <laughs> now, when a woman writes that in, you best to believe we talking some weight here. I will speculate on how wide I think this situation is as we move throughout the letter. I've told him I don't feel sexy most of the time, and I'm dealing with some health issues because of the weight gain. I recommend the both of you immediately Go to Walmart.com and start yourself off with some Elevate You. I cannot tell you a better way to try to start your health regimen by getting your uh, mitochondria and fed on the cellular level and give yourself the energy to want to work out. But until you try Elevate You, let's just deal with the letter. You're dealing with some health issues because of the weight gain. Well, what health issues do we have when we gain weight? Joint pain is one of the things that becomes a health. Inflammation is one of the things that happens with weight gain. High blood pressure comes with weight gain. Gout comes with weight gain. Pre-diabetic and predisposed to diabetes come from weight gain. Lack of control of your insulin level due to weight gain. Snacking, cravings, all of that is because the insulin is gone shot. Crazy. Well, now I suggest that we work out and whenever we try, he make that set. Oh, you thought you was going to bring yoga into the house and do a downward dog and he back there? You thought that was going to work? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you was going to lay on this floor and have him hold your ankles and you do a sit-up where when you come up here, guess what? He got something waiting on <laughs> Hang on, Steve. Hang on. Yeah, we'll be back to this. Ain't going to yes. be no good ending to this. <laughs> Coming up, I think this is a sweet letter. Coming up, part two of... Um, the strawberry letter is Steve's response at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject is big and hot for the wrong reasons. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. Big and hot for the wrong reasons. Yeah, these two people been together 15 years. Used to be really sexually active. Now they've gained a lot of weight. Both of us. This lady said we've gained a lot of weight. Say she don't feel sexy most of the time, and she's dealing with some health issues because of the weight gain. Inflammation, gout, arthritis, diabetes, pre-diabetic, hypertension, high blood pressure, cholesterol levels is shot, 
insulin levels is going through the roof. We, it could be any one of those numbers. Erectile dysfunction ain't hit him yet because he's ready. But here's the problem, though. You suggest that we uh, work out whenever we try, he make that sense. Well, y'all had a sexually active life and it just slowed down. Slowed you down because of the weight. I think you're the big of the two. That's why you wrote the letter. I think you're dealing with a problem where both of you are rather well. But you said he's 6'3", so he carries it different. He's just wide. So what do you know that's in your house that's six foot three and wide? Well, I'm thinking right off the refrigerator. <laughs> You're married <Not>. to a <laughs> Kenmo. Your man is a Frigidaire. <laughs> Your man is a Viking. <laughs> Your man is a Sub Zero. You are married to William the Refrigerator Perry. He's a running back. That's what she just said. But now, I also suggested that we finally get that king-size bed we've been needing for years. He loves to cuddle up under me in our queen bed, and our ceiling fan in the room is broken. Uh-oh. Now, we got a problem here. We got two wide-ass people trying to sleep in a queen-size bed that he likes because he cuddle, and one of his hands is always under your breast. You wake up in the middle of the night, you drenched. But I'm telling you right now, the ceiling fan in the room is broken. You have got to get that damn fan fixed. (laughs) I don't know what that costs, but I'm going to tell you right now, a new fan is cheaper than a bed. You have got to get some ass circulating in that room with y'all two big ass in that little ass bed. And when you got two real big people in the queen size bed, it's no longer queen size. Y'all is on a cot. (laughs) Y'all is in that damn near sleeping in a sleeping bag. Because I know, lady, you didn't say how much, but you said you all have gained a lot of weight. Woo! She said, so imagine how hot it is with two oversized people in a smaller bed. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do what? I can't imagine. I don't know what that's like. I've been in I've been in a hot room by myself. I slept by myself in my attic. I know it's hot. I didn't have nothing on me, not even couple. <laughs> I know I no way in hell I could be in there and then he wanna cuddle under you. You don't get your fat ass off of me so right sweet. now and take your hand up. Shelly, this ain't no sweet letter. This is sweet. What is wrong with you? <laughs> they love each other. They can work it out. This is two fat ass people that's <laughs> overheating at night. It's what this letter is about. <laughs> and you just so sweet. They done set up here and ate their ass right out this damn bed is what they done done. How the hell a queen size bed ain't big enough no more? You know how much weight they done gained? Queen size, nice size bed. Mm-hmm. It's too small now. And then that damn ceiling fan is broke. So then she say, he lies there every night wanting to spoon. Spoon? Oh, that's sweet. He ain't no spoon. He's a ladle. There's a difference <laughs> between a spoon and a ladle. He that thing that you dip punch with. Mm. He ain't no damn spoon. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I've told him to fix the fan and get a bigger bed for us. He can't fix that thing. Do you know what'll happen if he stand up on the end of that bed trying to reach up there and fix that fan? What, what'll happen? He gonna flip that little twin size bed over and bust that whole damn window out. You stand on the edge of the bed and your ass is overweight. You gonna flip that mirror over your Can you please film it when you get up there and send it to me? <laughs> I've showed him several beds with good financing that we can go look at. You got to get a big bed, but you need some reinforcements. You need to get some cylinder blocks up under that box frame. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because don't sound like y'all going to keep it much longer. Because y'all weigh too much. He said king bed would make it harder to cut. King side bed, y'all have to get that thing financed. I don't know how y'all money at that ain't right. I'd buy you the bed if I thought it would help. But y'all big ass got to lose some weight. Because I don't give a damn what you already ate y'all ass out that queen bed. If we buy the king size bed, all y'all going to do is eat y'all ass out there. I don't know what y'all, y'all going to sleep in the floor after a while. Uh-uh. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, y'all just big ass gonna be down in the flow with with y'all comfort to spread out just from window to window. Yeah, y'all guala y'all wide ass all around that. This is about weight loss. Y'all gotta lose some damn weight. Tell him where to get elevate you. And then he's talking about he's ignoring the elephant in the room. No, he ain't. Y'all is the elephant. <laughs> oh my Both God. y'all. <laughs> y'all is the two elephants in the room and in the left. Anyway. I'd give it to him every day if he'll work on his weight. Leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter Elevate Instagram. Elevate what you need. <laughs> on Steve Harvey FM. And check us out. Uh, check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand, okay? It's on the free iHeartRadio app. Up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Ah, Chris Paul. Chris Paul, man, I feel for Chris Paul. He's being traded what to up? the Wizards, man. He's being traded to the Wizards wow. for Bradley Beal. What? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's finalizing the no deal. contenders. <laughs> but no you seem to be sent to. But, Tommy, let's, let's tell you how he found out. From his own son. His son told him, hey, Dad, you're being traded. Well, he needs what? to retire. Chris Paul. Yeah. It's time to oh. get out. Yeah, yeah. just going to retire. Don't play for the, the Wizards. <laughs> Your son telling you? Do you understand that he finna make thirty million this year? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, but okay. I ain't going to play. I I go and play for the Roxbury Rockets Junior High team for thirty million. <laughs> Not the Junior High team. <laughs> yeah. You heard me. me. See? Well, DC it is. <laughs> yeah. well, DC. Pack my bags. In. But they're gonna trade him though. They're gonna trade him. Yeah, he's not going to play him. No, I don't think he is. They probably buy him out of his contract. They probably buy him out. <laughs> well, he still got to stay farm, though. He still got them. Chris Paul going to be fun. Does he? Because we've been seeing a lot of Jake. Chris Paul got a great, Chris Paul mm-hmm. got a great career, man. And, and, yeah, and, and, and sure. the Lakers could use him. The Clippers could use him. Oh. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of contenders that contenders that need a point guard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Wizards? Yeah. Hey, man. Well, even on top of that, Tommy, check this out, man. Draymond Green has turned down his twenty-seven million dollar yeah. option to play for the for the Warriors. Turned down. He said he's gonna be an unrestricted free agent. So, so twenty-seven million. I can't see turn down twenty-seven million. No thirty. Oh, I don't know. If you can get more, Draymond's yeah. a great ball player. He has an edge about him. <laughs> Maybe he should go to the Wizards. <laughs> With Chris Paul, order uh, order Rockets. We could use him. We show sure good use. Him. Oh, we yeah, definitely he, can he, use. Him. But he gonna want. He want to go somewhere. You gonna go? You're not gonna go from the Warriors to the Rockets. Y'all need to be serious, okay? <laughs> Why, are you? Are you, you like, every you time we want a player, you, you always, always tell us we can't have that. Houston, hey, man. every time. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you a question. Draymond Cleveland ain't Green. worth a damn either. Draymond Green been playing with Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. Do you think he's finna leave the Warrior organization and go play for the Rockets? Just think about it for a moment. Have y'all Steve. lost your damn mind? No, we Whoa. can hope. Why would you Why go you to a winning atmosphere hope. today? What, what What is you hoping for? Draymond, come we to can the build. A, we can build a team, man. Around Draymond. Draymond ain't going to get in no building situation. Draymond been champ. Draymond got rings on his hands. Okay. All right. <laughs> like Thank you. you. Thank you, Junior. <laughs> yes. Coming up at the top of the hour, the BET Awards are this weekend. And our very own Steve Harvey was the first to ever host the BET Awards back in 2001. Whoa. Steve we'll Harvey talk about the it. Entertainer. That's right. Whoa. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hi, I'm Yvonne So, and I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom of three school-age boys. Moms are the backbone of our society and the stars of my podcast, Cashing Our Trillions. Cashing Our Trillions spotlights moms, how we sustain this $1.5 trillion economy of unpaid female work, and the social and structural changes needed to prioritize us. 
This season, my guests include Moms First founder Reshma Shojani. We have to finish the fight for moms. Springboard to Opportunities founding CEO Aisha Yandar. Really have been changing the way that we talk about poverty in this country. Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. We need to set up a system where there can be more moms in office. We'll discuss all things mom, from Web3 and the metaverse to co-housing, politically activating suburban moms, and de-stressing with CBD. Search for Cashing Our Trillions on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Why Isla Isla Bonita one of her most famous songs? So when you're wrong, are you often long words like this? Because you should really like slow it yes. down, listen, okay. and get to the right yes, Okay, is. That's okay. what this whole okay, podcast I'm, okay. is. It's just Fran being wrong at length. Rose. Fran, how did we make it to the second season of our podcast and we still have all these opinions? Uh, pardon my non-binary vibes, but I'm just like, <laughs> does it all need to be explained? Pat took the glasses off her face, put them on America, <gasps> and those are Betty's glasses. That's so shit. Yeah! <laughs> a forgotten Madonna album. Forgotten by the world, maybe, but not by and me. Not, and not by me. Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. But I have it. <laughs> but I have it. Period! <laughs> Father, son, house of Gucci. Like a Virgin is proud to be a part of the Outspoken Network from iHeart Podcasts. Listen on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The 2023 BET Awards has planned a non-stop hip-hop party for the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. This year, Drake tops the list of nominees. Doesn't Drake always top the list? He always <laughs> tops the list of nominees, earning seven nods in total, while rising star Glorilla trails him with six nominations of her own. Congratulations to her. 21 Savage and Lizzo have tied with five nods each. Beyonce, Burna Boy, Chris Brown, Brown, SZA, and Ice Spice all tie for four nominations. As part of Culture's Biggest Night, this nonstop hip-hop party will feature Big Daddy Kane, The 69 Boys, E-40, Fat Joe, Ja Rule, Kid and Play, MC Light, Master P, Remy Ma, Soldier Boy, The Sugar Hill wow. Gang, yeah, wow. Trick Daddy, Trina... Uncle Luke, Warren G, the Yin Yang Twins, and many others. This will be a big celebration for the 50th anniversary of hip hop. The BET Awards will air live this Sunday, June 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Now, Steve, you and said hosted the very first ever BET Awards at the Paris Casino one, in very Vegas. First two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this was back in June of 2001. And uh, you and Sid hosted the second one at the Dolby Theater in Vegas in 2002. So do, how do you remember it? How, how do you remember it? I mean, As you know, of course, it, w it wasn't what it is today. Mm -hmm. It was huge. Because mm -hmm. BET was, was uh, recognizing black culture and black excellence. So it was really good, man. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we brought some people out on that stage, man, for the first time. It was really, really good. And it's just grown and grown and grown and grown since then, yeah. Mm -hmm. To what it is today. I feel honored to have been the first one. Me and Sid talk about it. We was talking about it uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. How we what felt about saying? that then. You know, how mm -hmm. cool it was, you know. Yeah. We didn't know it would lead to this. We didn't know we'd end up here. I mean, you know, you got to look, man. BET 2001, that was right after the Kings, man. Y'all mega stars now. So we were yeah. just like yeah. crazy, <laughs> man. Yeah. And we thought that was dope back then. I had no idea what God was really about to do. Yes. I didn't, you couldn't have told me this. I, I would have known BET award show would be this big. It's one of the biggest nights of award shows that's looked for because of the, the, biggest. The, 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 the biggest stars. I'm telling you, when it comes to this music thing, it's ours. If you mm -hmm. take us out of music, man, music dies. Oh, music. For sure. yeah, if for we sure. were not in music, music. If we were not in sports, sports dies. If we were not in Gun. entertainment, entertainment dies. We've been a major part of the fiber. If you if you try to take us out to history books, you cannot explain how this country was built. You just cannot explain this without us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You'll That's be watching this Sunday. True that. Mm -hmm. Huh? You'll be watching this Sunday, the oh, BET no, Awards. Yeah, 
<laughs> I will be watching. Okay, we yeah. will. Yeah. I, I'm not going to see I watch the BT thing. Awards I promise every, you that. every year. Every, every year. I'm going to be at somebody's wedding in Italy. Oh, wow. Oh, You'll, be right. You'll be that's out the country. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. the most hey, memorable yeah. moments you could just yeah, think It's my about. anniversary, man. Yeah. Oh, happy anniversary. anniversary. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Steve, happy anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. How many years? 17. <gasps> wow. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. That's Mr. major. Harvey. Congratulations. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. And just as happy as ever. Go ahead, boy. You. Look at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's going to be nice. A nice mm-hmm. vacation. You see that, Junior? You see yeah, how many years he got? Mm-hmm. See how, you know how you get that, Junior? You get that by being quiet. <laughs> quiet, <laughs> Junior. Yeah. Break it down, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, you just yeah. celebrated yours how many years? 22. 22, I like 22. I like to see it. You can get this. Two years. Being quiet, <laughs> Junior. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, guys. Don't forget the BET Awards will air live this Sunday, June 25th, 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Listen up, Steve Harvey Nation. Experience the award-winning soul of Motown. Celebrating Motown legends at the Westgate Cabaret at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. You could win a trip for two to see Soul of Motown, including round-trip coach airfare, two nights hotel, a $250 credit at Serenity Spa, and a $150 dinner credit at Edge Steakhouse. Enter now and get rules at steveharveyfm.com that's steveharveyfm.com for all the info it is sponsored by Westgate Resorts nice the Temptations and the Supremes I'm thinking yeah Yeah. (laughs) this is this is huge Motown because you know you know (laughs) when they do the mighty (laughs) Tim I will be in there screaming doing my my girl clap yes Yes. So nice. again, you can get rules and everything at steveharveyfm.com, steveharveyfm.com for all the information. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Westgate Resorts. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Ooh, my girl, ain't too proud to mm-hmm. beg. Man. The Supremes, Gladys it, Knight, the Jackson. It really pays to listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Yeah. We be hooking you up. We do it big. We this have something for everybody. Everybody. <laughs> I love it. All right, coming up, we'll close out the show with 85 South. It was such a pleasure to have them on. Such fun, such insightful, funny, crazy young guys. They mm-hmm. really have their heads on straight. They really do. Many thanks to Chico Bean, Carlos Miller, and DC Young Fly. Steve, you will be back with them right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, uh, and normally this is our closing remarks, but uh, earlier today we had our 85 South on the show, and I asked uh, DC to stick around and the fellas to stick around. They've been here all morning with me. Crazy, crazy morning. I wanted to talk to DC. <laughs> about his life right now. First of all, we offer, all of us here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show offer you our condolences on your loss. Thank you. And, um, man, but what I wanted to say was I saw the moment that you had at at your girl's home going mm-hmm. and the speech you gave. And I got to say something to you, man. I, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I have that fiber. I, I might but I I don't think I did. I watched your speech, man, probably six times. I knew you had a relationship with God, Mm -hmm. but I did not know it was that type of relationship. And after listening to your speech, man, I realized, I said, man, this dude right here, God got a place in his heart that if you weren't aware of it, you have to be now because that can only be God with this speech you gave, man. And I just wanted to say to you, DC, I commend you on your strength, man. And I think you don't know it, man, but you really did something for a lot of people, man. So I just wanted to tell you, man, from all of us here at the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man, how important you are, not only to your culture, but you crossed a lot of barriers. Because I'm 66, man. And I learned something from your young ass that day. 
I learned how powerful God really was, man. I did not know that God could give you that kind of strength, man. And so for you and your family, man, uh, we wish you nothing but the best. And you had young children and everything, man. And uh, you're just a powerful dude, man. I, I, I just want to say that to you. Man. I appreciate it. And, and you know, it's, it's it's a touchy subject. And I ain't, I'm not really too fond of just talking about it with just anyone. But you are a God-fearing man as well. And I learned a lot from you. So, mm. you know, I feel like we, on a certain level, spiritually, mm. where this conversation can be talked about. And mm. we know the energy that when you talk, and I said it off air, that... Yeah, I see the shows, but I like when you go off air and you can be real mm -hmm. because you get to cry and talk to the people yeah. and be you. Yeah. And give them the game and you always implement God in everything you do and you yeah. always let them know I wouldn't be who I am today mm. if it wasn't for God. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I grasp that every time you talk. And it was one of the moments where, I mean, still to this day when somebody asks, I ain't got the answers. Mm. I'm God fearing. You feel me? I lead by the spirit, not by the flesh. You know, you got a human mind and you got a spirit mind. Mm. And there's no human secret way of dealing with things, mm. especially when real life hits you. And I think a lot of people don't know real life. Yeah. All right, we'll be back with Chico being Carlos Miller and DC Young Flies right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Why is La Isla Bonita one of her most famous songs? So when you're wrong, are you often long words like this? Because you should really like slow it yes. down, listen, okay. and then get to the right. Yes, okay. she is. That's okay. what this whole okay, podcast okay. is. It's just Fran being wrong at length. Rose. Fran, how do we make it to the second season of our podcast and we still have all these opinions? Uh, pardon my non-binary vibe, but I'm just like, <laughs> does it all need to be explained? Kat took the glasses off her face, put them on America, <gasps> and those are Betty's glasses. That's so shit. Yeah! <laughs> the Forgotten Madonna album. Forgotten by the world, maybe, but not by and me. Not, and not by me. Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. But I have it. <laughs> but I have it. Period! <laughs> Father, son, house of Gucci. Like a Virgin is proud to be a part of the Outspoken Network from iHeart Podcasts. Listen on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, we're back, everybody. Uh, earlier today, we had our 85 South on the show, and I asked uh, DC to stick around and the fellas to stick around. They've been here all morning with me. I wanted to talk to DC. I did not know how powerful God really was, man. You may can create how your life can go today, <laughs> yeah. but you don't know where your life going to go mm. tomorrow. And once I learned that I can't control life and the thing that's around it, but I can't control my spirit. Wow. That's one thing I do got control over. Somebody may hit your car today, but they can't control how you act mm. off being hit. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That's right. So it's like, yeah, I've been ducking and dodging, but I still got hit. Yeah. <laughs> you can drive as safe as possible, but you still get hit. Yeah. And it's on you to maneuver and, and show people when do you get hit, what you're gonna do. And like I said, uh it's just it's an unfortunate situation and my life is on display. Yeah. So it's like they're watching. Yeah, man. But what I also understand my calling. And once you understand your calling, you understand that it's bigger than you. You know, cause day for day I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I just thank God I still got my mind to figure it out. You feel me? Yeah. And it's like, I ain't got all the answers. And as a human, everybody has an emotional side and that's just the science in them. But when you know God and you know all the things that he done brought you through before, and it's like, I never question. Rule number one, if you're a firm believer, hey man, you don't question the things that happen in your life. Right. I was laying in the bed the other day and I was like, why me? And then some said, well, well, why not you? Mm. If he wanted to give the battle to, to old boy and them, yeah. He could have gave it to old boy and them, but yeah. old boy ain't equipped. Yeah. He ain't he yeah. ain't, he can't fight this fight. Yeah. He's not ready. And not only that, that's not his job. Right. I got a job for you. Yeah. So I need for you to finish, carry it out. And if you study the Bible, and if you read the Bible, they are already showing you how to keep going. You got to take those stories from all the kings and all the prophets. And you like, okay, if they can go through it, 
then I could go through it. And if they could keep their faith, I could keep their faith. Because I read it right here. It say, well, if he, mm. he who kept his faith and he who kept going, God kept his faith on him. Mm-hmm. Why would I turn if the, 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 the book Come already on, told me? Come on. The book told me. Yeah. The book told me. So if I'm living by the book, I'm going to die by the book. I'm going to walk by the book. And I'm going to talk by the book. And I'm going to sit here and say, yeah, I'm emotional. Yeah. I'm... This is a forever trip. Go oh, forever. This is a forever trip. But I got my shoes on. I got my chin up. And I got my chest out. Because I know that if we are the example, Joseph didn't complain when he was the example. Mm. And I'm learning from Joseph. So somebody got to learn from me. And they got to know the only way is the higher power. Ooh. See, man, I, for you to be at this age, oh, boy. and Lord. I'm telling you, you've, you're teaching people who are much older than you, bro. Listen to me, because I know. I done seen this hammer hit some people before. I done seen how they handle it. There's no manual for grief. Ain't no book you can read. You know, I hate, I hate people coming up to me, man, when I lose somebody important, my mama, my daddy, my brother, my best friend, he, he in a better place, hang in there, it'll be all right. Nah, man, what, what are you talking about? What you mean better place? My mama's better place when she's upstairs in the rocking chair by the refrigerator. That's my mama's better place. You quit talking to me about a better place. Yeah, and man. people say all these traditional things to you because they don't know what to say. Right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody know what to say. Death when is you, a problem for the living. Come on, man. I mean, it is, really is. Death is a problem for the living. We are responsible for carrying on the legacy and the memory of the people who are no longer here. But that is a test that is, you know, a lot of people don't know what that test is because you never had to take it in the capacity that, you know. But just the bigger picture. It's the bigger picture what people fail to realize. And this is this is it. I got to make sure I solidify my spot in heaven. Hmm. Not get to it. Solidify. You know what I'm saying? So if this is my my fight, then I gotta fight. I wanna make sure that when my time is up, I look at my heavenly father and I say, I swear on everything I I tried to live right. Yeah. Look, look, yeah. look, I, I, I did do. not yeah. detour yeah, from the you. Yeah. They tried everything. Yeah, I sat right there shot. and watched the enemy yeah. keep coming. Did I not do my best? Yeah. Come on. I know I solidified my spot. And you got to. And and the beautiful thing is, he's prepared this place for us, but he also forewarned us that there are none perfect, no, not one. Right. So if ain't nobody perfect and there's none perfect, no, not one, then what is it a heaven for? Heaven going to be filled with a lot of imperfect people, but who gave it their best shot. Who tried to do the best they can. I get tired of people coming to me. I, you a Christian, you was cussing. You a Christian, you smoked the cigars. Christians don't smoke cigars. This one do. Right. This, this <laughs> Christian does both of those. And I have an occasional drink too. And I punch people in the mouth if you say something about my Facts. mama. You know, I'm just, I'm just Facts. telling what Christian I am. I, you, you want a Christian turn the other cheek? I'm pretty sure they're out here. Right. I'm entry level Christianity. I don't do advanced Christianity. If you do that, then cool. Mm-hmm. I got that other thing for you. I'm gonna be the dude at the gate. Might have to have a little meeting when we get at the gate, but he's gonna <laughs> let me in. We're gonna have to go over a couple. He gonna run a couple clips back and. Right. Ah, and I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, that was definitely Lord. getting pulled. Yeah, you to might, the you side. might, yeah, yeah, you I might, know they're gonna pull you me. Might have to go to the, the man cave of heaven, but from the way you put your man cave on earth, <laughs> it's gonna be straight when you get up there, Steve. Hey, no All the way, hey, brother. I just wanted to say that to you, man. We love you. I appreciate. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate 85 South for coming on this morning. Ghetto man, Legends. what a great yeah. morning. The Ghetto Legends Netflix yeah. special is on right now. If you have not seen what they do, it's on Netflix, and it's called Ghetto Legends. 85 South, everybody, yeah. show your love. Thank y'all, yeah. brothers. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. One, two. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What's up, y'all? My name is Mimi Walker, and I'm your resident Auntie Supreme. 
over at Hand Me My Purse, the podcast. If you aren't familiar with Hand Me My Purse, it's a podcast that's all about diving into and understanding the nuances of Black culture, from social emotional well being to cultural matters, mental health, and just the life experiences that we have to face every day. Be sure to tune in every single Tuesday. Listen and follow Hand Me My Purse on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The true crime podcast, Sacred Scandal, returns for a second season to investigate alleged sexual abuse at Mexico's La Luz del Mundo megachurch. Journalist Robert Garza explores survivor stories of pure evil experiences at the hands of a self-proclaimed apostle who is now behind bars. I remember as a little girl being groomed to be his concubine. That's how I was raised. It is not wrong if you take your clothes off for the apostle. Listen to Sacred Scandal on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Your Financial Maven podcast, where we need to change the way we think about money, our understanding of it, and the effects. I'm Samantha mittman Besnoff, CPA, and I have spent over 25 years in the accounting field. The Your Financial Maven podcast will touch on things like saving and budgeting and really anything around money to help you feel financially empowered. Listen to the Your Financial Maven podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The podcast Transportista, Who Murdered Captain Coral, tells the story of Colombia's drug wars. Pablo Escobar's death was supposed to bring peace to Medellin, but that peace was shattered for Beto Coral when his father was murdered. Two sides, criminals and law enforcement, in a battle to the death. In the middle, a city full of innocent people. The result? Thousands of forgotten victims. Listen to Transportista, Who Murdered Captain Coral, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.